projection of solids, see what are all the solids available. Okay. So what is solid? Solid. Solid strain of solid is a three-dimensional object. Okay. So so far we have seen a point. Okay, two-dimensional line, okay, one-dimensional line, then half, two-dimensional planar surface, we have seen the projections. Now, we are getting into the three-dimensional objects. Okay, so in reality, if you see any elements, if you see in reality all the objects, it is of, okay, finite regular solids or regular solids. Okay, it is a combination of regular of these solids. Okay, in reality, any shape if you see, it is the combination of these solids. Okay, I can say the we have a world of solids around you, right? So these are all the regular solids we have. So how to project these solids? If you know, so the actual elements, machine elements, whatever you are going to draw the views. Okay, that you, you can draw the views for, them, right? So we will see what are the solids there. Solids I can classify, broadly classify it as uh, uh, right solids. Right solids and oblique solids. Right solids. Make a Right solids and oblique solids. Right. So right solid in the sense solid is solid axis is perpendicular to the solid axis is perpendicular to the face. So here axis perpendicular to base. Right. Then it is a right solid. Right. Then I have an oblique solid. So if the axis of the solid, so whatever you have you will have an axis, okay, whatever you now you are seeing here, you have an axis, okay, they are all perpendicular to the base, right. So these are all right solids what we have. So then oblique solids, we have, if the axis is inclined, inclined to base, then I can say it is an oblique solid, right. The axis is Inclined to the base, then we I don't have an oblique solid here, right? So suppose we have a solid, say a pole, the axis is like this. Okay, the pole is an oblique pole. Okay, the axis is not perpendicular, it is inclined here, right? Perpendicular, it is not perpendicular to the base. So the right solid is, say, suppose I have a pole, if the axis of the pole is perpendicular, it is perpendicular, then it is a right solid. So similarly, we have holes to the right. So you see here, so the right solid, if the base edges of the, if the base edges, I have a solid, you see here, I have a prism here, okay. So it is a solid, it is a right solid, the axis is perpendicular. I have the base edges, okay, the, all the base edges are same size. If I have all the base edges of same size, all the, or all the side faces are same uh, plane, okay, same size, same shape, then I can say it is a right regular solid. Okay, I can say it is a right regular solid. Okay, all the sides are same, all the base sides are same size. Okay, then I can say it is a right regular solid. So the right solid I can still I can classify it as Right regular, right regular solid. Classify it as right regular solid. Then I have an irregular solid. Right. Right, regular in the sense all the base edges or side faces are same. Okay, same side. Okay, base edge. 
are the faces of same size. Same size. Right. If I have like that, then it will be a regular, right regular solid. Right. So what we are going to see, you see a solid is the right solid we are going, we are not going to public solid, see. Then we are not going to see regular solids, we are going for right regular solids. In right regular solids, we have, again I can classify this right regular solid as three, three, two major categories, right, right regular solids. One is polyhedra. Polyhedra. Right. Polyhedra in the same. Okay. All the face. So a polyhedra is nothing but a, the face, the sides of the solid will be a planar surface. Right. The sides of the solid, if it is a planar surface, then it is a, called as a polyhedra. Polyhedra is if the sides, if sides are faces, faces are planar, sides are planar, not faces, the sides are planar, then it is called polyhedra, right, it is called polyhedra. Generally, polyhedra, I can say it is a regular polyhedra and other polyhedra. I can have it as regular polyhedra and other polyhedra. In regular polyhedra, I have different polyhedra. So, the cube is nothing but a regular polyhedra. Regular polyhedra, it has the square faces. How many square faces? It has six. Okay, it's a regular polyhedra. So, similarly, I have tetrahedra. You can say tetrahedra. Tetrahedra. Tetrahedra is nothing but as polyhedra. Okay. It will have tetra means four. Four equilateral triangular faces. Equal equilateral triangular faces it will have. Right. See here. This is a. This is a. Tetrahedra, it, is, it looks like a pyramid, it is not a pyramid actually. Pyramid will have an apex and it will have a height. Here it doesn't have a height, height will be so it doesn't, it is not specified with a height, it is specified only with a size. A tetrahedra of size 40 in the sense, all the sides of the tetrahedra are 40. 40 in home size. It doesn't have a height. Right. So tetrahedra, it is of equal size of equilateral triangle has four equal sides of equilateral triangles. Okay. So this is a tetrahedra, so you can say it is four equilateral triangles. You can make a note. Four equilateral triangles. If it has, that solid is a polyhedra and it is a regular polyhedra, it is termed as tetrahedra. Okay. Then I have cube. Cube is having six what face? Six equal square faces, right? Six equal so cube. That I can turn it as hexa. Since it has six, I can turn it as hexahedra. Hexahedra, right? So hexahedra. Since you want to write it clearly, you see the polyhedra we have here. We write it again. I have polyhedra. Polyhedra, okay. that's the way it Great, polyhedra, I will have a, this is the first one, tetrahedra, tetrahedra. So it has four equilateral, equal, equilateral triangles. Right. Then I have hexahedra. Hexahedra is nothing but six square equal square faces. That is nothing but we know that is cube. That is cube. Then I have octa hexa octahedra. Octa 
algebra of complete matrix A to A equal equal to triangles if you can the solid is for octahedra you see here this is an octahedra right so i have four faces on the top four equal equilateral triangles i have on the top on the bottom i have four equal equilateral triangles right so this is a so totally it has eight equal equilateral triangles this is a octahedra right then i have Do deca hedra. Do deca hedra. That is do deca in the sense it is twelve. It is twelve. It will have twelve regular equal size of pentagons. Pentagonal faces. I have here. Wait, you can see the faces are pentagonal. The shape of the pentagon is same for all the faces. Right. It has twelve. Right. Of such pentagon, regular pentagons. Okay, it forms a solid that is a dodecahedron. Right. Then I have icosahedron. Icosahedron. Yeah, twenty. Icosahedron means twenty. Twenty equal equilateral triangles. Twenty numbers of equal equilateral triangles to give me icosahedron. I don't have such solid. Right. Then here. So this is they are all polyhedra, regular polyhedra I can classify. So I have some other polyhedra, right? I have some other polyhedra. Okay, it can be that is other polyhedra, other polyhedra. So other polyhedra. So in that I have. So regular polyhedra in the sense you know, regular polyhedra in the sense you know, the only faces okay are equal. So that is a regular polyhedra. Right? If the all the faces are not equal, but it is a right regular solid. Okay, it will have if it if it has of same size of two bases. Okay, and if it has same size of rectangular side faces, then it is termed as what prism. Okay, I have prism, square prism. You know, you see, it has one base here, one base on the top. Okay, the base shape is square, and side faces is rectangular. So these faces, base two, are equal. Side faces are equal. Okay, but it is not regular throughout. So, so I can term this as a prism. Okay, now in polyhedras, I have prisms. And I have one more thing. If I have this pyramids, I have prisms and pyramids. Right? In prisms, in prisms, right? See here, prisms will have two equal size of bases, two equal shape of base. And it will have rectangular or vertical faces, side faces. It will have a rectangular, a rectangular or vertical face. Right. <coughs> see here. You will see. You will see. Prism. Prisms. Will be term named be behind the shape of the base. Okay, if the shape of the base is square, then it is named as square prism. Okay, if the shape of the base is pentagon, okay, if the shape of the base is pentagon, then it is a pentagon prism. Right. So if the shape of the base is um, Triangular prism. Okay, if it is a hexagon, it's hexagonal prism, right? So I will have square prism, square prism. I have square prism. Then I have hexagonal pentagonal prism. 
pentagonal prism i have hexagonal prism hexagonal prism right generally i have then if it is a rectangle rectangular prism okay i have square pentagonal hexagonal prism right
it is an isosceles triangular in shape. The isosceles triangular faces or I can term it as slant faces. Then it will have, it will have a point that is down as vertex or apex. Straight. Is it clear? So me, you just, if I have a square so I have, so I have the axis here. my base, this is my base, okay, then this is termed as base edge, base edge, and this is a base corner, then I have an apex, okay, and this pyramid will have a height, okay, it is defined with the height, it will define with the base size, okay, base size, size, then it is defined with the specified with the height of a, with the height, okay, that is the distance of the apex from the base, right, so that is nothing but the height, then it will have triangular, isosceles triangular side slant faces, it have isosceles triangular side slant faces, right, this is the triangular, as generally I can say triangular faces or slant faces. Then this is my apex or vertex. Then it has an axis in the middle from the base to the apex. Right. And it is perpendicular, so then it will be a right triangular from it. Right. So what term? This is base edge, base edge, so this base corner, then this edge, I can say it is a slant edge. I can term this as slant edge. So term this as a slant edge. Right. So this is about Pramits, so Pramits also I will have square Pramit, square shape, pentagonal shape, pentagonal shape, then I have hexagonal shape, I have hexagonal shape, right. Then apart from this other polyhedras, I will have in polyhedra, I will have or from prisms and pyramids, not in polyhedra. In solids, generally, I will have, or from polyhedra, I will have solids of revolution. Okay, solids of revolution, that is nothing but to give. So, we add it in solids, or from these pyramids, prisms, polyhedra, regular polyhedra, right? I will have solids of revolution. So in this category, we will have cone cylinders and sphere, right? Cone cylinders and sphere, okay. So if I have a cylinder, so I have cylinder, okay, cylinder, how I can obtain a cylinder? Cylinder, you see, it is something like a prism, but prism with circular face, okay. But it doesn't have rectangular side face, okay. So it, it is not a polyhedra, it doesn't have faces, planar faces, it doesn't have planar faces. That's why it is not called a polyhedra. If I have plane surfaces as faith, then it is a polyhedra. It doesn't have planar surfaces, it has a circular surfaces, okay, and it has a cervical face, straight surface, that is called cylindrical face, okay. You see here, this is a Cylinder, you know, the cylinder is generated by okay. The cylinder is generated by revolving a rectangular plane, revolving a rectangular plane. You know, the cylinder, if you see, I have a if I have a rectangular plane, 
if I revolve this rectangular plane about one of its vertical edge, right, if I revolve this, I can generate a cylinder. This is a plane shape. About this vertical edge, x edge of this rectangular sheet, if I revolve it, I will generate a cylinder. Okay. So, so it will give me a cylinder. So in this cylinder, I can draw it. Anything you draw it here. You see here, it will generate a cylinder. If I revolve it, it will generate a cylinder like this. Right. This is a rectangular shape. Plane. Plane. If I revolve it about an edge, about, about its own a vertical edge, then it will generate a cylinder. Right. So then I have cone. Cone. If I revolve a right regular so isosceles triangle, okay, but if I revolve it and triangle. If I have a triangle, you see here, if I have a triangle like this, so it will have, it should have one vertical edge, okay. If I revolve this triangle about its vertical edge, I can generate a cone. If I revolve this triangle about its own vertical edge, I can generate a cone. The cone will be generated. So this is a thing I am revolving code can be generated, right. Similar way now, sphere. Sphere can be generated by revolving what? Circle. Sphere can be generated by revolving a semicircle. Okay, if I have a semicircle like this, okay, about this diameter, about this diameter, if I have a semicircle of plane about this diameter if I revolve this semicircular plane I can generate a sphere I can generate a sphere right then apart from this solids of revolution we have so one you think about by revolving a Revolving a rectangle, you can generate by revolving triangle, I can generate code by revolving a semicircle, semicircle, I can generate a sphere. Truncated, truncated solids. Truncated solids. Okay, suppose I have a cylinder or cone. Okay, if I have a cylinder or cone. If I have, you see here, if I have a cylinder like this. If I have a cylinder like this. It has an axis in the middle. Right. It has an axis in the middle. It has an axis in the middle. You see here, if I truncate this cylinder, okay, cylinder or that is truncated in the sense if I cut, if I cut the cylinder in an inclined manner, if I truncate the cylinder in an inclined manner, what I will obtain? I will obtain a truncated solid. So this is nothing but a truncated cylinder. Actually, I had a cylinder. I have cut the cylinder in an inclined manner. Truncate the cylinder in an inclined manner. I have got a cylinder with a truncated portion. Okay, that is the truncated cylinder. This is a truncated solid. Similarly, if I have, if I have a pramir, okay, if I have a pramir, if I cut the pramir in an inclined to its axis, I will obtain a solid, okay, that is a truncated pramid. Okay, that will be a truncated pramid. If it, I have a cone, if I truncate it, that will be a truncated cone. Okay, any solid in an inclined manner, if I cut it, I will obtain a truncated solid. 
So in play to it acts as if I cut it truncated. I will obtain a truncated solid. Right. Truncated solid, any solid you can truncate. Okay, that is called as truncated. Since it is inclined, the cutting plane is inclined to the axis. Then I have another one, frustum of solid. Frustum of solid. So in this category, frustum of solid, so only if I cut the solid parallel to its base. You see, if I have a prism or a cylinder like this, if I have a same cylinder, if I cut it parallel to its base, what I will obtain? Again cylinder. If I have a prism, if I cut it parallel to its base, again I will parallel to its, uh, perpendicular to its axis, parallel to its base if I cut it. So again I will obtain a prism, same prism of different height, that's it. But it will be a prism alone, okay. So if I truncate a prism or cylinder, I will obtain again a prism. Okay. But if I truncate a, if I cut a plane, if I cut a uh, pyramid or cone parallel to its base, I will obtain a different solid. That solid is a first term. Right. So you see here, it is a pyramid I have. I had already, I had a, a square pyramid. So that square pyramid I have cut, truncated it parallel to its base. Then I have got another solid that is a frustum of a square pyramid. Frustum of a square pyramid. Right. I have a pyramid or cone. Same. I have a cone here. If I truncate this, that is cut this parallel to its base, that is perpendicular to its axis, I will get a solid that is nothing but a frustum of a so this is nothing but a system of a core. So similarly for pyramid, if I cut it parallel to its base, I will obtain a system of a pyramid. So, so for system of a solid, I can use, I can get a system of solids only for cones and cones and pyramids. Right. If I cut this on a parallel to its base, as for cone and pyramid function, I will obtain a first term of a cone or first term of a pyramid. So other solids, if I cut it inclined, any board in inclined manner, if I cut it, I will obtain a truncated solid. Right. But this is the world of solids, regular solids we are going to see. So in that, not that irregular solids, right, oblique solids, we are not going to use it only the regular right regular and that right regular solids we are going to use it in this second unit so, so mostly we will be seeing only polyhedra in that polyhedra also we will be seeing only tetrahedra or cube will be restricted other polyhedra we are not going to see right then in other polyhedra we have prisms and pyramids that we will be using in your problems right that is prism so all prisms Square prism, pentagonal, hexagonal prism, all pyramid, hexagonal, pentagonal, square pyramids will be using in your problems. Right. Apart from that, we will be using this cylinder and cone. Right. Then we will be using some of the truncated solids. Or we will be seeing truncated solids and frustum of solids. Right. Frustum of a cone or pyramid. Okay. Is it clear? Do you have any clarification as? for solid concern, okay, you should know the nomenclature of each solid, okay, it has edges, if it has an edges on the base, there is base edge, corner on the base, then it is termed as base corner, right, if for prism, it will have vertical faces, vertical, rectangular faces are vertical faces, okay, rectangular side faces are vertical faces, for pyramids, it will have a base, a yeah, single base or a triangular slant face. Okay. Triangular faces or slant faces we term it. So that edge we will name it as slant edge. And for pyramid, I will have an apex or vertex. Okay. So the problem should be defined using that normal process of the solid. Right. See solids with position with the first quarter. Again, as I told, we will be keeping the solids going to keep the object in only in the first quadrant. Right, that is, we are going to get the first angle position, that is front view and top view of the solids. So 
So solids can be kept in various orientation. Okay. So what are the orientations we have? We will put it down. So positions of the solids will be first in the order. The solid, if I keep it perpendicular, so the positions will be writing the positions of the solid with respect to its axis. Okay, with respect to its, for solid, it is a three dimensional object. Okay, it has faces, bases, okay, everything. But common to all the solid is axis. Okay, we have an axis common to all the solids. Okay, if the uh, depending upon the axis orientation with respect to vertical plane and horizontal plane, okay, we will write the positions of the solid. If the axis of the solid is perpendicular to H, what is this orientation in depth? What is this orientation? Horizontal plane, you know, vertical plane. So the axis is inside. It is the axis is perpendicular to the HP and it is right? So axis perpendicular to HP, to HP and parallel to BP. Right. So in this question, as for solid concern, so as for plane concern, then we will start the prop, draw the projections of the plane where you have to start the projection of plane where you will have this as for plane, plane concern where you will get the true shape ok so in plane problem where you are getting the true shape of the plane there you will be starting the true shape then you will be proceeding for the projections final projections right so where you will obtain the true shape as for plane concern if the plane is parallel to any one of the reference plane, on that plane I will obtain the true shape. Similarly, as for solid problem, okay, so wherever, where you will obtain the true shape of the base, there you have to draw the base first of all, then you have to proceed for the final projections. So in this case, where I will obtain the true shape of the base, HP, 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 why? Base is parallel, which is common for all the solid. Axis. Axis. Tell me with respect to axis. Axis is perpendicular. So you see, if the axis is parallel perpendicular, in which plane the axis is perpendicular, there I will obtain the true shape of the base. Right. So wherever the axis is perpendicular, I will obtain the true shape of the base. Now you see the axis is perpendicular to HP. So on HP I, will, I can draw my base, true shape of the base, then I can proceed for the front view. Right. Similarly, I have axis perpendicular to VP and parallel HP. So here, yeah, this is the orientation. You see this, in this orientation, the axis is perpendicular to VP and parallel to HP. So I can see the base, since the axis is perpendicular to VP, I can see the base on VP. That is on front view, I can draw the base. Right, true shape of the base. Then I can go for my top view. Right. So then I have another orientation. Axis to parallel to both HP and VP. So in this orientation, you see, this is the orientation I have. See this solid, you see it has an axis. Okay. The axis is parallel to HP and parallel to V. So where I will up to where I have to draw, I have to search for my true shape of the base. And axis is perpendicular. It is axis. The axis now it is perpendicular to the axis. So I have to draw the true shape of the base in the side view. Then I have to come for the front view and top view. Right. So then, so if the axis is parallel to both HP and VP in the sense, axis is perpendicular to axillary plane. Axis is perpendicular to axillary plane, right? So then, axis is inclined to HP. So, inclination to HP is 
theta you know inclined to hp and it is parallel to v parallel to v okay this orientation can say okay i don't access access is inclined to hp and the axis is same time it is parallel to vp so where the axis is perpendicular now i have to look for the to draw the true shape of the base so i have to look for the perpendicularity of the axis to which plane it is perpendicular now it is not perpendicular to hp it is not perpendicular it is parallel to it is not ah uh, so in this orientation what i have to do i have to assume i have to solve two steps wherever the axis is inclined i have to make it the axis is perpendicular okay wherever the axis is inclined i have to make it the axis perpendicular then only i can see the true shape right now this is called the simple position so so far whatever we have seen the first two categories that's all on simple position if i keep the axis perpendicular if keep the solid perpendicular to v, hp solid axis perpendicular to hp or perpendicular to vp then it is a simple position okay simple orientation right so this is a tilted orientation tilted to axis is tilted to one reference plane straight so what how i can solve this first of all i can go for a simple orientation so wherever the axis is plane i can make the axis perpendicular right to that then in the second step i can tilt it okay so so i can proceed with this problem so now since the axis is inclined to hp and parallel to vp i can assume axis assume axis perpendicular to hp right so axis perpendicular to hp but now wherever i have the perpendicular axis perpendicular there i can draw the true shape of the base two steps i can solve this right then first one axis inclined to vp vp inclination is phi and parallel to hp right parallel to hp see here so now the axis is parallel now you see the axis is inclined and the axis is parallel okay it is parallel to hp and it is inclined to vp so since it is inclined to vp what i have to do it i have to make it perpendicular to vp i can draw the true shape the second orientation right i can draw the true shape then i can change its position in the second step in a tilted manner right so i can assume axis perpendicular to vp in my first step right so you have another orientation okay that is axis is inclined to both the reference planes okay we have to solve it in three steps so as for your syllabus concern for solids we are closing with this right axis is inclined to hp only inclined to one reference plane axis is inclined to only one reference plane you have in your syllabus so it is easy and only you can this unit is easy definitely you can score okay in this unit perpendicular to hp and parallel to vp so straight away you have to draw no problem take i have a square prism suppose i have a square prism like this what will be my front view what will be my top view front view will be a rectangle top view is square i know so how i have to proceed as for to draw the projection as i told wherever the axis perpendicular wherever the axis is perpendicular i have to draw the true shape so as for this orientation concern you tell me how it is oriented it is axis is perpendicular to hp and it is parallel to the apart from that the face is how it is oriented its base edges of the edges of the solid space how it is oriented you see one of the edge in this orientation it is parallel or i can say the rectangular face one of the rectangular face is parallel right otherwise i can say how i can say in another way what about this face rectangular face it is perpendicular, it is perpendicular. one of the rectangular faces perpendicular to vp right 
or square, if it is parallel to the perpendicular to the VP is same. For pentagon hexagon, one of the phase is perpendicular to the for pentagon the shape is changing. Right, is it clear? So you just you can see here the solids I have to form this orientation, first orientation, I have to proceed with, have to proceed with the blue shape. Drawing the true shape of the base where it is perpendicular, it is, since it is perpendicular to HP, so I can draw the true shape. This, I know it is a square base, square prism. You see, this is a square prism I have. Now, in the top view, this is the top view. Since axis is perpendicular to HP, I am drawing the true shape on HP. Now one of the edge or face is parallel to VP. Right. So you see this one. I can see both the bases in this location. Okay, I can see the top base, I can see the bottom base. Okay, both coinciding on the same location. This is nothing but my top view of the prism. So as for prism, consider it wrong. Suppose I have prism. Okay, from that I project it to the 
front wheel brake and can drive projector the drive projector okay that is nothing but from the axis rotation from the top view right from the true shape so from the reference line what is the height i have to measure it from the sorry front view that is 70 okay from the reference line so along this projector axis projector line i can mark that height of 70 that is nothing but the solid side axis line this back I should end my friend view right so first of all we will project this all the corners to the friend view so from A, B, C, D if I extend the projectors I will have a friend view like this this is not this is just a projector okay right so this is going to be my final top view of this orientation this is going to be my final front view right the notation should have to mark it ok now this is you know this is A, B, C, D you know this is A, B, C, D this is 1, 2, 3, 4 so, which one I can mark it here? You have the 3D diagram here. So, A, B, C, D I can mark it here. A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash. This is 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, 4 dash. So, here. So, which one I have to put in bracket now? The hidden details you have to mark it carefully. So in both the views you will have hidden details as for solids. Right. See, to put the hidden details for the front view, you have to look at the top view from the bottom. To put the hidden details for the top view, you have to look at the front view from the top. So you see as for this, if I look at the front view from the top, I can see 1, 2, 3 base. I cannot see A, B, C, D base. So A, B, C, D in the top view base, so it is hidden. Inside bracket I have to say. So one, as for front view concern, I have to look at the top view from the bottom. <coughs> so if I look at the top view from the bottom, I can see only these four corners. Okay, these four corners are hidden for me. So what is what? 1A, B2 is visible. 4D, C3 is hidden. 4C, D is hidden. C is hidden. Here, 4 also hidden. Also so how you have to mark the hidden details, right? Then from diameter to the DT you have to dimension the given details. This is 30, this is 30, and the height, axis height is 70. Right. So the axis height has to be measured from the reference line. Is so it clear? One more thing you have to add in for solids. Okay, the axis you have to show it. Where you have the axis? Now where I have the axis here? I can see only in the front view. The axis I can see it in the front view. I can show it in the front view. Right. So front view it will be exactly in the middle wherever you have drawn the axis projector. Along that axis projector only you are measuring the height. Right. Otherwise, we will make mistake as for Pramit. Right, Pramit. So, along the axis projector, only you have to measure the height as for Pramit concern to mark the apex. Right. So, here I have the axis in the axis projector. So, I can show the axis not in a darkened manner. So, you know the representation of axis. The representation of axis, you know. It is a center line, a long line and a short line, a long line and a short line, not a dot. A long line and a short line. Take a problem, a tetrahedra, a tetrahedra of size 50 mm, a tetrahedra of size 50 mm is resting on the ground. with one of its faces there is no base for tetrahedra right with one of its faces in 
in such a way that the edge on the resting face, the edge on the resting face is perpendicular to VP. Is perpendicular to VP. So stop. Draw the front view and top view of the tetrahedra. Draw the front view and top view of the tetrahedra. The problem is given. Tetrahedra. Tetrahedra. Right. Of size or of size? Size is D. 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 And one more thing it is given. A face is resting on the ground. Right. On that face, resting face, a edge I will have. That edge is perpendicular. It is like this. That edge is perpendicular to BP. Right. So what we have, that edge is parallel to VP. You correct it, that edge is parallel to VP. Not perpendicular, parallel to VP. So edge is, yeah, edge parallel. Right, the edge is parallel. Now you see, there is no height for the solid. Why? This is a tetrahedra, it has all the sides of 50 mm. Right. There is no height for the tetrahedra, there is no base, all are equal faces of, it is a regular polyhedra of triangular, four triangular faces. Right. Four triangular faces. See here, now it is resting with one of its face on the HP. Now where I can draw the shape of the face? If I have, if I consider it has an axis, if I assume it has an axis, it is resting like that. If I assume it is, it has an axis, that axis is perpendicular to HP. So I can draw the triangle, equilateral triangle on HP. So I can proceed my problem by drawing the true shape of the face. Yes, as for this problem, you see here. with a face on HP. So how I can draw this triangle? You see here, the same triangle I can draw it like this or like this. Which one is right? Which one is right? Second? One or first one? Second one. It is one of the edges parallel. It is resting with the face on HP. And one edge, one edge of the resting phase is parallel. Because I have three edges on the resting phase. One edge is parallel to VP. So this is the orientation. You have to draw the true shape. If this orientation you are drawing, the problem should be the resting edges. One of the edges perpendicular. Right. So you have to draw it like this. And you take any infinite of distance in my I haven't given any infinite of distance, you can take any infinite of distance, take any infinite of distance by a triangle. That is equal to triangle. Take any infinite of distance. 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 Take any infinite of then how we can get the other corner?
see. So I, we can see four corners in this. One more corner is there for a tetrahedra. That corner is nothing, corner is nothing but the, in the middle, okay, center. From there you can see other three edges, okay. I have three edges here. So totally I have six edges. So other three edges I have to show you in my top view, right. So you mark the center for this tetrahedra. So center you can, you know, how to mark it. Perpendicular bisector, right, of two sides will give me the center. Perpendicular bisector of two sides will give me the center, right? Okay. So one side is the perpendicular bisector, another side is the perpendicular bisector will give me the center. Right. To this center, I have to connect, that is nothing but my another corner. I have in the tetrahedra. Edges also. Other three edges also, right? Listen, they all the corners you mark it. Okay, there is no apex here. So I am giving the rotations, not even here. A, B, C, and D. So I have four corners A, B, C, and D, right? I have six edges for tetrahedra, right? So that six edges in the top, you see here in the top, you can see like that. Triangle you can see, the other edges also you can see. Right. Now, you have to proceed for the front view. You do it. Anybody? You do it. So you don't have the height. As for tetrahedra concern, you don't have the height. Previous problem, you had a height. So from the axis I can mark the height, along the axis from the reference line I can mark the height. Listen all of you, previous problem I had height for this prism, from the axis along the axis projector line I can measure the height. Here I don't have the height for tetrahedra. So anyway I have to look for the height on the axis projector. As for this tetrahedra concern, the axis can be in the middle. Okay. So I can draw an axis projector line. So what, what is going to be the height from the reference line to mark the D in the front view? So D is going to be, you know, listen all of you, you know the front view. Come with design. You know the front view will be a triangle. Listen, you know the front view will be a triangle like this. The front view will be a triangle like this. This edge also, it will be like this. But arriving at this D location, arriving at this D location, for this I don't have the height. What height I have to take it? Anybody? What height I have to take now? 50. When I can take the same 50? When I can take the same 50? Suppose I have, remember your straight line problem. When I can mark the same 50 for a slant line like this, you consider this line alone. Listen, listen all of you, this is an important one. Consider this line, this, this is nothing but an edge of a tetrahedra, again, different view. When this edge, this edge, okay, slant edge, will give me the true length of that edge, true length you know of that slant edge, it's 50. When it will give me the true length? When it will give me the true length? Of this edge of the have this is A. A and D. When it will give me the otherwise C and D. The C and D edge, I know it is 50 in actual tetrahedra, right? In this front view, it need not be 50, right? It need not be 50. So if it should be 50, C D should be 50, what is the condition it should have that C D line? It should be in the top view, it should be parallel. So it should be parallel to VP, right? Now you see, this CD edge, you are right. The CD edge should be parallel to VP. Then only I can obtain the true length of that CD in my front view. So you see, the CD edge is in parallel. The CD edge is in top view, you see. This is nothing but my CD. Is it parallel to VP? Is it parallel to, it is not parallel to the reference line. So it is inclined. So that edge also, won't give me the true length. That is 50 mm, I cannot measure it. 
So only if these slant edges, either of these slant edges, that is AD or BD or CD, so anyone is parallel to the reference line, I will obtain the rule, I can use the true length in my front view. So in this orientation, suppose the same problem is given like this, you see, if the same problem is given like this, the tetrahedra is like this. What is this orientation? One edge is perpendicular. So I will have my A, B, C and D. The other edges, you see other edges are C, D and A, D and B, D. Right. So I can get my base parallel it is a state. I can mark that. That is C and B. Right. So here I can have my axis. So in this orientation, which slant edge will give me the true length in my front view? Which edge? That is D, D. Okay. So I can mark D from B by measuring 50 mm. In this orient, since you can see this edge. B D is a line, you consider this a line, it is actually, it is parallel, it is parallel to B P. In this orientation it is parallel to B P. Right. So that line will give me the true length in my front view. So if a edge is parallel in the top view, right, so that edge will give me the true length in the front view. So if a edge parallel in the top view, if a line is parallel in the top view, that line will give me the true length in different view. Right. Same line will give me the true length in different view. Okay. So you see here this line, BD is parallel. So from BD I can measure 50. I can from B I can measure 50. I can arrive at the another corner D. Then I can finish it off. As for this problem concerned, what I have to do? It. So nowhere, none of this edge, AD or BD or CD is not parallel. So from there I can mark my D. What I have to do it? What I have to do it? Huh? Rotate. In straight line what we will do? If it is not parallel, we will be making, rotating into parallel and we will be projecting to the front view. Right? Same manner, the edge, we consider this CD. So from D, I can rotate this CD and make it parallel, then I can project it, from there I can mark, measure 50 mm to arrive at the other corner for D. Right. So this is an important procedure you see here. So from this statement we know if a line is parallel to any one of the reference line, right, I will get a true length on that plane, on that view. Right. So here now I will, am considering AD, CD, BD, right. So all are straight lines. Okay. It's a edge. It's a straight line. So none of the edges are parallel to the reference line. So none of the edges front view will give me true length 50. So what I am going to do, any one of the edges I will make it parallel. I will look for an arbitrary location. From there I can measure 50 mm to get the final another corner. Right. So you see, by projecting this base locations, I can mark, I can mark various base polarities resting. There is A, B, C. So this is A dash, this is my B dash, this is my C dash. I have got this. But to get the D, to get the D in different view, to mark the D in different view, as for tetrahedra concern, since I don't have the height, just you rotate from D, you rotate DC, I am rotating. Okay, anyone you can rotate it. DC, I am rotating it. DC length in the top view, just I am rotating it and making it to parallel. I am making it to parallel. Rotating it and making it to parallel. So I have, this is C, you know. So I have another location. Arbitrary location, I am marking it as C dash, C1, I am marking it as C1, right. So now this DC1 is parallel, now it is DC1 is parallel, that I can project it in the front view, from that I can mark my, I can use my 50 mm to get D, right. Now DC1, I can project it to the reference line, DC1 I can project it to the reference line. Get an another 
other who gave up C1 dash. C1 dash. From C1 dash to the access projector line, what distance I have to measure? 50 mm, I can measure it. 50 mm, I can measure it. I can look for my D. I can look for my D. So this is my D, actual D. That. So where I am measuring, that is an arbitrary location. That location is C1 dash to D. C1 dash to D. This is nothing but my 50. I am measuring using that as 50. This is my 50. Base, the true shape of the base, first of all, 
by searching for the axis perpendicular at right. t. Now, I am going to draw a pentagon here. The pentagon, how I, I have to draw it? A pentagon's one edge, say it is hexagon and what I have now. Okay. A hexagon, suppose I keep it like this. Okay. The edge is parallel. The edge is parallel. The edge of the pentagon given in the given problem, it is inclined to be B. It is inclined. The edge of the pentagon, it is inclined to the edge, you see this edge, it is inclined. Okay. The edge is inclined, that inclination is given. This inclination, whatever you are measuring in below the reference rate, that is inclined to be P, right? So the edge, I have to draw a 20 degree line. Okay. Along that, on that I have to, I should have an edge of the pentagon. Then I have to finish my pentagon, right? The 20 degree line, you can draw it. 20 degree. This is 20 degree. So if it is parallel means, the edge is parallel means parallel you can draw a pentagon. The edge I can keep it parallel and I can draw the pentagon. Now the edge is 20 degree inclined. So what I can do, I can measure 30 mm and I can mark the pentagon's edge here. So this is going to be my the edge of the pentagon. Right. The edge of the pentagon is 20 degree inclined. Now we can finish off the pentagon in this orientation. Okay, try to you know how to draw the pentagon. Carefully you draw a regular pentagon of the pentagon. See, you can give the notation for the pentagon. So you see what is this? It is a pentagonal prism or pyramid. You have to write it. It is a pentagonal pyramid. So what? Majority of students do mistake. In, instead of pentagonal pyramid, they will be uh, drawing the projection for pentagonal prism. So that you will be making mistakes. Okay. So avoid mistake. You write first of all what is this solid? Actually, it is a pentagonal pyramid or pentagonal prism. Right. So it is a pentagonal pyramid. So you are drawing projection for pentagonal pyramid. You know, for a pyramid, I will have an apex. I will have the slant edges. For a pyramid, you can see. You can see. So we are looking at this pyramid in this orientation from the top. I can see the base. I have drawn the base. Apart from the base, I can see the slant edges also. Okay, the slant edge, to show the slant edges in this orientation, I have to mark the first of all the apex location, that is the center location. Okay. So this is actually I have hexagon. You see, in this orientation, I can see the hexagon and I can see the slant edges also here. In this I can see the slant edges also. For to show the slant edges in my top view, I have to mark the apex first of all. Apex is nothing but the center of the pentagon or hexagon. How to mark the center you know? Center. Two sides perpendicular bisectors will meet at the center. Right. Two sides perpendicular by bisector. You say one side middle I can consider it. So I am joining it to the opposite corner, there is one side to the other, another side. I am joining to the opposite corner, I will have a line like this. Then another side, perpendicular bisector. So here, I am joining to the opposite corner, I will get an intersection. This intersection is nothing but my center of the pentagon. It is in the top view, it is nothing but the apex of the pentagon. From it, right. So this is the apex. Okay. So carefully you have to mark the center for pentagon. Okay, you should not make mistake. Right. Always the view. So this is my center of the pentagon. Nothing but my apex in the top view. By joining this apex to all the corners of the pentagon is nothing but my slant edges of this pyramid. Carefully you have to show this. For all the slant edges of the pyramid. Is it clear? For as for pyramid, if it is a pyramid, you have to show the slant edges. Okay. Okay. In the top view. If it is prism, I can see only the base. Okay. Two bases will go inside. Here it's a pyramid, so slant edges you have to show it. Right. Is it clear? Now this is going to be your final top view. Right. So just dimension any one side. So any one side you keep your drafter parallel to that extend, extension line. So 
now how I can go for my front view just I have to draw projector from okay from the top view from all the corners before that what I have to do I have to mark the apex first of all along the axis projector line so where I have the axis here in the middle okay from the middle I have to draw an axis projector line first of all okay so from the middle I have to draw an axis projector line Right. Then, along this axis projector line, I have to mark the, measure the height and I have to mark the apex. Right. So what is the height? It's 60 mm. 60 mm from the reference line. Okay. I have to measure it. 60 mm from the reference line. Then I have to mark my apex. So this is going to be my apex in the front face. Hold that. Right. So, this height is my 60 mm. This is my 60 mm. Right. Then, as I told already, okay, for the base notations, you start the notation from the left extreme. Okay, left to bottom extreme. What is the left most? The base corner I have here it is this okay this corner so I can give this as A this is B then C in an anti-clockwise manner I can give the notations right these are all top two notations so without that then I can get the base edge okay or the whole base of this pentagonal from it base will be on the reference line so I have to mark the front view locations of this base corner so just project it all the corners can be projected to the base right so these are all the locations of the various base corners ok what are all the corners carefully you have to mark it so this is my A dash, this is B dash, this is C dash, B dash, C 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 in the front view, I can see the slant edges. Okay, the slant edges. What are the slant edges? First of all, I can see in this. Okay, in this orientation, what are all the slant edges I can see? How I can find that? How I can find that? What are the slant edges visible in this orientation? Okay, you don't have solid in your hand. You have the top view. How I can see what? With now, first of all, which is, which is the corner is hidden? First of all, in the, in the front view. Can you tell which is the base corner is hidden? E. E only is E is the corner, only corner is hidden in this one. You see here, while looking from the top view, from the bottom, I can see A, I can see B, C and D. I cannot see E. So E is the only corner is hidden. So from E to apex, I can join it with a dash. Okay, that slant edge is a hidden slant edge I have. So from E to E location to Oh, that I can join it. I can. I have to connect it with the dotted line. Okay, dash line. You see here, it is not dot. A small line. Okay, a small line. You have to connect it with a very minimum gap. Okay, the line. In between the lines, you should have a minimum gap. It should not look like an axis line. Right. And it should not look like a dot. Okay, it is a hidden line. Okay, hidden line carefully. Right. Then the remaining slant edges are visible for me in this orientation. So I can connect all the base corners to the apex with a continuous line because that slant edges are visible, fully visible. That is A to O is fully visible. D to O is visible. C to O. D O slant edge, all the four slant edges are visible. So A to O, I can connect it with a visible line from B to O, I can connect it. C to O, then D O to T. So this is my 
final friend view. Right? Is it clear? This is my final friend view. Quickly try. Problem. You see, the next orientation I'm going to give access perpendicular to VP. Access perpendicular to VP. Right? So if the axis is perpendicular to VP in the sense where, where I will, I have to, I can see the base. If the axis is perpendicular to VP means where I can draw the base on VP, right? Wherever the axis is perpendicular, there I can get the true shape of the base. Now the axis is perpendicular to VP. Suppose I have the solid you see here, it is like this. You see this axis how? The axis of this prism is perpendicular to VP. Right. So you can see the base of the prism in VP. You can draw the base of the prism in VP and you can proceed for the top view. So the front view you will be drawing first of all, then you will be moving for the top view. Is it clear? Now you take a problem. Yeah. Hexagonal prism. A hexagonal prism. Hexagonal prism. I have I am giving an hexagonal prism. Hexagonal. And it is important whether it is prism or probate. A hexagonal prism of base side. Base side. 30 mm. And height. 5 mm is lying on the ground is lying on the ground lying in the sense you see it is lying on the ground like this so any orientation it can lie it is lying on the ground you see this tool is the ground it is lying on the ground in the sense what it is horizontal plane it is horizontal plane it is lying on the ground such that it is lying on the ground with one of its rectangular side face. Lying on the ground with one of its rectangular side face. The prism has, this hexagonal prism has six rectangular side face. It is lying on the ground with one of its rectangular side face. Such that, now you see in this orientation what I have kept, it is in place. Okay. Such that the axis is perpendicular to VP such that the axis is perpendicular to VP. Right. Full stop. Draw the elevation and plan of the prism. Draw the elevation and plan of the prism. Elevation is front view. Plan is the top view. Right. Now, you know the prism is axis is perpendicular. So I have to draw the prism. Uh, base, I can get the base in the VP, perpendicular to the base, so I can get the base in VP. You see here, how you have to draw it. Now, it is on the ground, the hexagon, whole hexagon will be on the reference line, in the front view, whole hexagon will be lying on the reference line. It is lying on the ground, where I will have my reference line, this tool, this is nothing but my reference line, I will have my hexagon touching the reference line. So, what I can do, my, in this crowd of my hexagon is going to be like this. Right. The front view, the hexagon, okay, base of the hexagon I can see like this. Right. Two bases get coincided. Right. Then I can proceed for the top view. Now straight away I cannot draw it. You know only you are going to draw only using the circle method, the hexagon. Okay. So using circle method, drawing the reference line first of all, it will be difficult. Okay, what I can do is straight away you draw the hexagon first of all. What I am doing? First of all, you can draw the hexagon first of all. Hexagon, how you will be drawing? You will be drawing a circle of base side, 30 mm radius. I can take, I can draw a circle using that radius. Then, since the base is lying on the ground, okay, in this orientation I want, since I want in this orientation, I have to divide this circle through horizontally. Right. So from here, using 30 mm, I can get my hexagon like this. Right. So the hexagon, how you are going to get the hexagon? 
this is the hexagon. Straight away you can stick the hexagon. Then where I have to draw the reference line here? Touching this bay, one of this side. Okay. Then you have to draw the reference line. As for this problem concept, don't draw the reference line, then don't draw the hexagon. Okay. You will find it difficult, right? Otherwise you have to draw a side and you have to go for 60 degree, then you have to construct the hexagon. So you straight away draw the hexagon first of all. So the hexagon I have constructed for 30. Right. Once you have got the hexagon, then I can draw the reference line. Okay, I can draw the reference line. So this is my reference line x, y. Right. Now, two bases are coinciding on the same location. Okay, I can see two bases. This is a prism. It is not from me. Okay. I did not know of the apex here. It is a prism. So, I can, I can give one of the base notation as A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Yeah. with the dash. The other base edge, either you can give it in numbers or PQRS, right? I am giving it in numbers 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, right? So, two bases you can see in this prism. Now, you can proceed for your top view. Top view, to get the top view, first of all, what projector I have to draw? Axis projector I have to extend it. You know, the axis is in the middle. I can draw an axis projector line. Right. Draw an axis projector line. From the reference line, I have to measure the height of the solid. So it is not given the, if this prism, the same prism, if it is lying like this, okay, if it is lying like this, it will do okay. It is not given where it is where it is lying, okay. The infinite of distance is not given. So I can Take any infinite of distance. I can consider any infinite of distance of this base. Okay. So I am considering any infinite of distance. Considering any infinite of distance. So I can keep one base here. I can keep one base here. Another base, what distance apart? 65 mm apart. So another base I can measure 65 mm apart. For prism, I will have vertical edges. 
what are vertical edges of this group here? So you look for the top view. Okay, again, whatever these are all B. What is this? One A is nothing but a vertical edge. Six F is nothing but an another vertical edge. E five is nothing but another vertical edge. Right. So whatever whatever vertical edge is hidden here. Okay. So you look from the top. Okay. What are all the corners is visible. I can see A, F, E and D. I cannot see B and C. So B and C is hidden. B and C vertical. That is B, 2B and 3C is a vertical edge, two vertical edge. That is hidden. So that hidden vertical edge, if I see, it will be, I can see it as a dotted one. That is B, 2 and B, that is 2 and B, similarly C and 3, C and 3, C and 3, I have, okay, C and 3 are vertical, okay, okay, is it clear, 1A is nothing but a vertical edge, 1A is nothing but a vertical edge, okay, 2B is nothing but another vertical edge, okay, 2 base corners, if I connect it to the line, that is a vertical edge, right, similarly, so I cannot see this 2B and 3C vertical edge. That is, that should be connected with a dotted line. I can, I can see all other vertical edges. So I can join all other, that is 1A, I can join it with a, it is a visible vertical edge. I can join it with a visible line. Right, before that I can see these bases as a straight line. The another base, I can see it as a straight line. Right. Two bases I can see it as a straight line. So I can see one A vertical edge, I can see six F vertical edge, so I can see this four D vertical edge. Apart from that which I can see. Six F I can see. So you see F and six already it is coinciding with the hidden edge. So over this, if I see the visible edge, six F. So the hidden is Hidden data is hidden here actually, right? So, if you have a hidden data, hidden edge and a visible edge, a visible edge one day I can show you. Right, here you can see an another visible edge. That is, similarly, that is E5. E5 you can see an another visible edge that is visible. So, that hidden vertical edge is hidden here. So, if you have a visible and a hidden edge, a visible edge will be shown, right? Is it clear? This is how I have to draw the projection for this axis. These are all simple positions, simple orientations. Either axis is perpendicular to HP or axis is perpendicular to VP. These are all simple orientations. Right? Simple positions. Right? This is the second case. Now on to the next orientation. To HP and So this is the orientation I have. So in this orientation, you see the axis, axis is parallel to VP and it is parallel to HP. The axis of this prism, what I have is a hexagonal prism, it is both is parallel to VP and HP. So in this orientation, I have to look for the axis perpendicular. As I told, as for solid problem concern, you look for the axis perpendicularity. Wherever the axis is perpendicular now, axis is perpendicular to accelerated. Here, axis is perpendicular to axillary vertical plane. So it is nothing but I can get the true shape of the base, I can draw the true shape of the base only in the axillary plane, that is in this side view. Okay, only I can draw the true shape of the base in this side view. So, any one side view I can draw it. Okay, suppose I am looking in this side. So, that is, this is nothing but as per reverse <coughs> your position, this direction of view is left side view. So, left, left side view I have to draw it on the right side. So, once you have drawn the base in the right side, left side view, then you can proceed, go for the internal result. 
It's a prism. Right, it's a pentagon, it is a prism. So, people will be making mistake in the solid itself. You will be losing full mark. Right, pentagonal prism, you will be drawing hexagon. Prism, you will be drawing from it. You should not make that mistake. Okay, you try to write like this, then you will be, you don't make mistake. Okay, so pentagonal prism of base side, base side. Thirty mm and axis height, axis height seventy mm is lying on the ground with one of its rectangular side face. Is lying on the ground with one of its rectangular side face. With the prism, you will be having rectangular faces. It is lying on the ground like this. Okay. With one of its rectangular side face. Full stop. Draw the projections. Draw the front and top view of the prism. If the axis of the prism is parallel to both HP and BP. The axis of the prism is parallel to both HP and BP. See, it is something like this in this orientation, axis is parallel. So axis here it is perpendicular to axis is perpendicular to axillary vertical plane. So I have to draw the side view first of all, you know, in the side view I can draw the pentagon. Okay, it is a pentagonal prism. So you know, you can draw the reference line. So this is my x and y. Then I can draw another line between vertical plane and plane. This is my x1 and y1. So here I can draw my left side view. Okay, left side view I can see the base of the prism since it is perpendicular. This is my axial vertical plane. Right. This is my VP. This is my HP. Right. On axillary vertical plane, I can draw my pentagon, pentagonal base. So pentagonal, you know, pentagons, one side is on the ground. So this is my ground reference line. So one side is on the ground. So one side is on the ground in the sense I can have one of the side of the pentagon on the ground. That is 30 mm. So I can mark anywhere 30 mm. So then I can draw a pentagon.
from the axillary plane or from the vertical plane, it is not given. So I can conveniently take one of my bases, okay, anywhere I can conveniently I can take one of my bases like this. Okay. So this is the other top corner no, like this and this will coincide, I will get another location. Here I will have these two base corners, here I will have these two base corners, here I will have one of my another base corner. Now what is the height of the solid? It is 70 mm. From this base I can mark the height. Suppose I am giving this as A T this is A letter this A P when C I have that itself in then P. This is my E. So this is my one of the base. I can see it as a visible one in this front view. Right. In this front view I can see this base and this base. Right. So similarly from here, 70 mm I can measure it. I can mark the another base. So another base is this. So it is 70 mm apart. So the same location I will have my other corner, another base corners, okay, this is my 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 and 5. So these are our front view rotations with the dash, I can mark it with the dash, right. Now, this distance between these two bases is nothing but the height, I can write it to that. Now, can you see what are the side edges you can see in this one? See, so this is a front view. From the side view, to draw the front view, how I have to look it? I have to look in this direction. This is nothing but my front view direction. So this front view direction, I can see this edge, this edge, this edge. I cannot see this. Okay, but this and this is coinciding with these two edges. Even though these two edges, side edges are hidden, similar to the previous problem. Even though this 1A and 2B is hidden in viewing the front view, hidden, I can see the visible edges coinciding C, C3 and D4 is coinciding with the hidden side edge. So straight away I can draw the visible. So I can I have the hidden edges here. I have a hidden edge. Similarly, I have a hidden side edge here. So I have a visible side edge also coinciding on the same location. That is 2B and 2C and B3. 2C and B3. So I have a visible edge. That itself, I have a visible side edge. Similarly, this is visible 5 feet, so this is visible, I can connect it with that continuous visible line. Is that clear? This is my front view. Now how I can draw my top view? Do you have any clarification in front view? Then draw the side view, then proceed for the front view straight away. Okay, you know the height. Then how to get the top view? So I know, you know, front view and side views are linked. Similarly, top view and side views are linked through a 45 degree line, so I can draw a 45 degree line. So I can I have to project all the corners to this 45 degree line. So this is 45 degrees. So I can project all the corners to this. Then I can horizontally I can extend. Now, how I have to mark the bases in the top view? Just from the front view I can 
project the bases. Okay, I will explain project R from the bases, from the front view. So this is the post of my top view. Right. So first of all, you give the notation carefully. You give the notation, mark the notation. The notation locations are there in here. See here, A is here. A is, this is the location of A. B is this. See this space in the top view like this. Right. Similarly, one is this, two, three, four, and this is my five. Right. I can see another space like this. Right. Now, what are the side edges visible in the top view? So for the top view, I have to look at the side view from the top. Okay, what are the EDA. I can see A, B, 5, E, D4. Okay. These two are hidden. First of all, I can connect the hidden side edges. That is 2B and C3 is hidden. So 2B and C3 is hidden. So I am connecting with that hidden dotted line, hidden slant edge. Similarly, this is hidden. Is it clear? So look for the hidden side edge in the side view. So I can this 2B and C3 is hidden. So I am joining that 2B and 3C as a hidden line, hidden side edge. The other remaining three side edges are visible. So I can connect that with that visible line. So I How you can get my top of you. Okay, do you have any clarification in this? So still what is missing here in this problem? The brackets. Okay, hidden details, hidden corners, you have to mark it with put it put brackets for that. Okay, what is hidden here? First of all, here. The front view what is it and A, B and B. So you in the, you see in the side view, suppose this is the this side view, you know, which is the base is hidden in this side view. A, 1, 2, 3 are A, B, A, B is hidden. So this is hidden. A, B, C, and B. Okay, in the front view which is hidden. So I am looking for the front view. The side view I am looking from here. I can see this. Six corner. One see this four corner. One does see one A. So one A is hidden. Then two B. Two B. Two does two B is hidden. So this is the hidden corner is different view. What is the hidden corner in the top view? You know, it is a hidden edge is going to be a hidden. It will give you the hidden corner. So look the side view. I cannot see this two B and C three. So two B is hidden in the top view. C and 3 is hidden in the top view. Right. So what is missing in this one? Dimensions. Okay, dimension 70 mm is over. The pentagon side is missing. It is given in the problem. You have to dimension that. 30 mm. 30 mm. You have to dimension gap split. You have to dimension that. So any one side can dimension it. can dimension it. So do you have any clarification in this? Axis but parallel to both HP and VP in the sense. Axis is perpendicular to VP. So axis is perpendicular to axillary vertical plane. So you have to draw the base on the side view. Then proceed for the front view. Then you go for the top view by linking the side view and the top view with a 45 degree line.